Hey everyone, Maury Curtis Dunbar here with Painted Studios on a beautiful Friday afternoon. I hope you all are having a great week and heading into this holiday weekend with a smile on your face and lots of fun plans. Uh, I am going to be doing family stuff myself so I can get my iPad so that I can read comments as we go along. So give me just a second to open that up and log myself in. Maybe turn the volume down so I don't have to hear myself. All right, here we go. All right, so I'm sure many of you are just buzzing out to go do uh, holiday weekend stuff, but me, I'm here working. So we're gonna do some fun stuff today. And one of them is we're gonna start doing some multicolored stenciling on cutouts. Now this one happens to be uh, our sandcastle cutout. Now, I'm working with the stencils that I carry, so I was trying to kind of create a theme that went with everything. And sorry, I'm flapping like a butterfly because my jacket wants to slide off my shoulder and I keep trying to tuck it into my apron so it doesn't because I got a, the air conditioner on behind me and it gets a little chilly. All right, so what I'm going to do is uh, work, choose a few stencils to work with. Um, for example, this is our gorgeous Dragonfly Studio by uh, Renee Holder from Two Chatty Chicks Teaching Eclectic Creations. We do carry these stencils. So now I'm going to use that on here, but we're going to make it a multicolored stencil. And we're going to place several of these all over the cutout to get an all over pattern. And this one, we're just going to sort of do medallion style, no repeats, but it should be very pretty. So let me flip down here. So as you can see, I placed my stencil on the uh, cutout already. Our base color is Faux Effects Matte Metallic Teal. That is a very popular color. It gives you the metallic look without being super shiny. So it creates a nice background for shinier paints, glossier looks, and of course, great patterns. Um, I'm picking a couple colors to use on this. So I thought I would use, oh, uh, Eldorado Gold, uh, a little white heat. These are all faux effects, metal glow colors. So I'm gonna use uh, Eldorado Gold, uh, white heat, and I wanted a little bit of purple in there, I think. So we're gonna use some of the golden, uh, the plum bisque. All of these are metal glow colors. They're from Faux Effects. If you don't see these on my website, uh, give me a buzz. I have them. Uh, I just may not have them right here in my warehouse here, but I'll get them for you within 24 hours or so. So don't worry about that. Oh, I gotta open these and I'm not smart. I don't do the smart thing about putting, if I, if, if I were smarter, I'd put a piece of press and seal over this. Hey, Midge, nice to see you here. Uh, I'd put a piece of press and seal over this and it would seal the edges so I wouldn't have to whack it to um, get it to let go. Now, I know you've seen me using a lot of set coat. Let me go grab a couple stir sticks. Usually you see me working in set coat and I use that mostly on furniture and everything else because as my base product, it's super high bonding, um, great colors, and it's interior, exterior related. Uh, uh, sorry, rated, not related. Um, for this though, for colors, I often will choose Metal Glow. Um, it's interior rated only. Uh, it is shinier and there's a lot of mica in these to make them more sparkly than metallic set coats. Um, so they're trade-offs. It's also a little sheerer and um, it's not meant to be used as a standalone wall product. It needs to have set coat underneath it. All right. Oh, don't be a pain in my butt. Come on, doesn't want to open up. How the heck did I seal this one so tightly? It's not one I use an awful lot, so I can't understand why I can't get it open. So I'm gonna set that aside. 
I'll figure out another color maybe. There's the Eldorado Gold. Of course, if I was smarter too, I would have had this all set up beforehand. There we go. I think I just cracked my lid, and I did. That's all right, I can squeeze a little product out because I don't need a whole lot. Okay, now, I will, I cracked my lid right there by whacking it so hard, so later on, yeah, I'm gonna be smarter and go in and seal that up. And eventually I'll find a tool that lets me do open up the ametrine, or I mean the, the white heat. Let's try a scissor, because that's normally, this shouldn't be that hard to open. Okay, white heat is one of the white um, metal glows, and this one has, and I don't think you can catch it at all on the camera, um, this has a slight red iridescence to it. Hey, Tony, nice to see you. Yes, I, you finally caught me live. I did not do a live yesterday. Um, there wasn't a shot. I hadn't slept for three days. Just having a, you know, all the stuff going on. Had a little trouble settling in, so. <laughs> I was a babbling idiot yesterday and I knew better than to get on the camera. Although it probably would have been incredibly entertaining to watch. Okay, I've got another color here. We're gonna use a little bit of the metallic navy set coat because I do not have a metal glow in a deep color, and that's okay. All right, so reminder again, heat the lid with my heat gun. Tony, the way I've been going, I'd set the lid on fire. <laughs> and you know I'm not lying. Hi, Joyce, nice to see you. Okay, so a reminder again, our colors are El Dorado Gold Metal Glow, Plum Bisque, White Heat, and uh, this one is Metallic Navy Set Coat. So we've got our Dragonfly on here. Um, I'm gonna change that angle just a little bit so that you can see it better. And we're gonna take a stencil brush. These are the ones that I carry. These are from the Stencil Garden Artistic Painting Studio. These are truly the, some of the best stencil brushes I've ever worked with. I've had cheap, I've had expensive. And I'm gonna tell you, this is right in the middle of the road and these are great brushes. So when you stencil, you start out with a dry brush. No water, nothing, nothing. You want it dry as can be and then you're going to start with just a little bit of paint. Tiny little bit of paint and then you're gonna work it into your brush maybe a little bit more, work it into your brush a little more. Okay, now metal glows are sheer. I'm testing this, this is not a combination I've used on this color base before, so I might not have a great result. We're gonna find out. Because this could be so close to the base color that, um, yeah, and that's kind of it. It's so close to the base color, it's just kind of going on very translucent. So now we're gonna pick up a little gold and see what happens. Uh, okay. Smear, I think maybe I'll just do the smears of the gold and the white together. Normally I would um, be double loading my brush. So normally, you've seen me do the double loading paint brush thing where I take some paint on one side from one pocket of paint and then I take some on the other side of the brush from the other paint and as you can see then you mix it together and you swirl it and you get a little bit of both colors. Well, because this white is so sheer, I'm gonna come in with a little, first I'm gonna dry my brush off because you do not want to do this with a brush loaded with other paint. I'm gonna offload a whole bunch of paint. I'm not washing my brush out. You don't wanna wet your stencil brush until you're completely done with everything and ready to call it a day because the water then gets up into these bristles and into the ferrule and when you use it to stencil, the um, 
water comes out and it causes seepage and it really makes a mess of things. Hi, Lisa, what a nice thing to say. Thank you very much. I appreciate the compliment. Okay, so we've got a little metallic navy, a little um, plum bisque, and let's get to the edges here. Let's see what I can make happen. And this is kind of cool because I do not have to go all the way through all of the pattern to get a result. I can come in and just put a little color and I think I'll just, I dip back and forth between different colors to see what the different results are gonna be. Let's see what happens when I do this. Now this could be very subtle. I might want to put another pattern over it once I do this. If I don't, if it's not 100% where I want it to be, that's not a big deal. I've uh, done all kinds of stuff like this before. I'm gonna take a little more plum, work it into the brush, because I don't feel like I got enough plumminess in here. I got a lot of blue because the set coat is so intensely pigmented that it kind of wants to take over on the metal glow. Metal glows tend to be a little sheerer. So for those of you who are familiar with Modern Masters metallic paints, uh, metal glow is the originating formula, I believe, for that. Um, and if you like those paints, you're gonna love Metal Glow. Somebody was calling me, I don't know what. Oh, you saw my mini bench that I foiled and loved it, thank you. That's, uh, that's a project I've done before. Um, I'm gonna go hunting down the videos for the carousel horse too, because I think that one deserves another another visit into the public eye. So that's another one I'm digging up for, for the holiday weekend, maybe. So you can see, I'm just taking a little color and smooshing it in places that I think would benefit from it because these colors are gonna want to blend uh, really easily into the background. So we're gonna just make sure I pump this up with a little bit. And usually I'm swirling, but now I've done some of this paint on here. So I'm gonna tap some color in just for a little visual texture. Meaning the texture, you don't really feel it. You just sort of see it on stuff. It looks a little more textury than it might actually be. I never really know how these things are gonna come out until I pull the stencil off. I have a pretty good idea, but I love the reveal. I, I own it. I, I'm, I'm like a sucker for a good paint reveal. Let me make sure I didn't miss any spots here. That would be bad. I don't really want to probably have to replace the stencil on stuff. Okay, here we go. Uh, I almost missed a spot right there would have been bad. Miss spots, then you have to put the stencil back down and figure out what you were doing. And since I'm generally not good at figuring out what I was doing before, uh, maybe I shouldn't screw it up now. Oh, this is pretty. Oh, look how beautiful that came out. Look at how gorgeous that came out. Oh, yes. Lovely, lovely, lovely. I love that. Oh, Lisa, how wonderful. Yay, I'm so excited. You're, and your timing's good because that weekend, I'm going out of town on vacation for uh, about 10 days. I'm going out to the Cape. So I won't, I'll still be around, but I'll be getting ready to leave town. So that would be lovely, Lisa, yay. All right, so now I'm gonna take my castle and we're going to find another placement for dragonfly here. 
um, I gotta see how dry that, that's, the one thing is normally when you're stenciling, your paint is so thin it dries fast, but Metal Glow is not a fast dryer. So you have to be a little careful when you're gonna lay a stencil down over it. Yeah, cause that's, that's still wet on my fingers. So I'm gonna set this aside before I screw it up because no matter where I put a stencil on here right now, except maybe at the very tip, um, I'm gonna ruin it. So I'm setting that stencil and that piece down on the floor. So the next thing we're going to do is a pineapple. Okay, so pineapple, we have faux effects, uh, true metallic true gold on here in set coat and set coat metallic navy. Now, um, I haven't sanded this one yet because even set coat can pop the grain a little bit so you always should sand between coats. This is 220, so I'm just running it over here. I don't want the texture on there. And I'm going with the grain. Just feeling to make sure I got off enough. Okie dokie. And let me wipe that down. And see, so you do get dust from that. So you don't want to leave that on there. That just makes a mess of your plans for your, for your paint. Okay, so for this one, let's see. Which, what did I think? Oh, here we had it. I had the elephant. I thought it would be fun to create an elephant pineapple. Now, this is another one of our gorgeous J. Renee, I'm sorry, J. Renee, uh, Renee Holder, Two Chatty Chicks Elephant Head Stencil. It's got a very mandala kind of pattern, which I think is awesome. So we're gonna set this over here. I'm just checking to see if I'm as close to centered as possible. Because it always makes the stencil look better if you're not too far off center. And I will put a background pattern in this. I'm just not doing it right now because I haven't decided how I want it to look. Okay, now I have a little bit of a piece bent up here, so I'm gonna take it before I press this down all the way and try to curve it back down so that um, I can get the impression. There we go. It's part of the tusk. Now, let me t hold this up right to myself, see if it looks right. Now it looks way crooked now that I'm looking at it. I hate when things, I think I have it all right and then it's really crooked. Look like a drunken elephant. I might wanna push that up just a little higher so that the trunk isn't right at the bottom and we look a little more centered. Now again, if you are a more OCD person than I am, please take your, give yourself a moment and measure and place. I'm just looking to see how my placement looks. Let's take a look. That looks good. All right, so we have lots and lots of other colors to play with. Uh, I think I'm going to use a little set coat metallic copper. here we go again with the lids. Okay, I'm not gonna keep whacking on stuff because eventually I'm gonna smack something so hard I break it and send it flying across the room and there goes the live with everything ended up in a coating of splashed paint. So again, don't do what I do. If you're fans of Jennifer Ferguson, follow her advice, which is to stick, press, and seal over the top of the jars here, that will keep you from having to do what I was just doing. Um, I think of it every day and then I forget to do it. So yeah, don't, don't do what I do. <laughs> right, we're gonna take a little of this Metal Glow Sausalito color. Yes, Tony, that would exactly be my luck. We all know, I mean, what? I, I don't know what else, 
I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit starting to feel like a little bit of a black cloud given the crazy stuff that's happened in the last couple of years. But so uh, I'm, I'm trying to be better and more careful about what I do to open jars <laughs> and stuff instead of sending it all flying around the room. Okay, so this is our Sausalito Metal Glow. Now you'll notice this one's pouring out kind of thick. This is a very old sample jar that I was sent because I did manage to keep the edge of that fairly clean and seal it up well. Um, it has been on my shelves for quite a while and it's doing very, very well. Now I'm not changing my stencil brush, but what I am gonna do is make sure I offload all my other paint on here. Um, you never <laughs> want to wet the stencil brush, but I don't wanna carry the wrong colors over onto my design ideas. So I gotta work some of that paint as much as humanly possible out of there. Because as you can see, I'm still getting a lot of paint out of this. Oh, Tony, yes, it is entertaining. It's a good story. You never know what you're gonna hear when I come on and see, you know, oh Lord, did she get her furniture? Did she get, <laughs> did they find out why the house burned down? Did, who knows? It, it's kind of a crapshoot when you're talking to me. I, I laugh about things because if I didn't laugh, I don't know what I do. All right, I'm going in here because there's a little bit of glitter stuck on my elephant. There we go. I needed to get that off because otherwise it was going to affect the pattern. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is go back into our paint with and do a little bit of the Sausalito. Again, the color on the body here is Elder, uh, not, this is not Eldorado Gold. This is not Metal Glow that's on the background on this. What's in the background here is Bow Effect Set Coat Metallic True Gold. I'm looking at the can right now just to make sure I'm giving you exactly the right name. All right, so we're gonna take some of the Sausalito color in here. And you see, I'm just sort of going all over. I'm really not putting a lot of focus into a whole lot of areas because I want all the colors all over this. A little bit of build up on each of the tusks. All right, I think for the next color, what am I gonna do for the next color? Hmm. I don't wanna go gold because it won't work. Now let's take a little bit of the white heat because while that's not really going to make it white, it's going to give me something a little bit lighter to lay with, blend with, whatever on here. It'll lighten up whatever the next color is that I put on there. Uh, let's try some Santa Maria Metal Glow which is very, very close in color to um, the teal, but this is a little bit bluer, not quite so green. It's right between teal and like a Tiffany blue. Let's see if that will, yeah, there we go. I just grabbed a bunch of jars off the wall so I didn't really think too hard about my color combinations because I wanted it to be a little bit on the uh, spontaneous side. Now my brushes are old, occasionally they shed, that's what I'm cleaning off. I don't want any shed bristles in there. It's not my favorite thing to have. And there's one right there that I must have dropped off of my hand instead of throwing off to the side like I normally do. loving how this is going over. And again, it's sheer, so you're seeing some of the under color, which is so pretty. If you wanted it more opaque, I'd say use set coat colors. They're going to be more opaque for you. Let's grab them a little more white heat, get into a couple more of these spots over here. And 
uh, just for the fun of it, let's throw a little copper in there. Get a little bit of darkness going because we have all these kind of lighter, brighter colors going. So maybe a little dark color. Now I might have some bleed because I forgot to offload my brush. I left it a little more full of paint than I meant to. And I've got a whole lot of colors going on, so I kind of actually need to offload. There we go, that's better. if anybody else somebody asked me recently where I get all my ideas from and uh, I said I don't know there's a lot of stuff rattling around up in my brain that eventually filters out into an idea and I honestly don't know where some of them come from it could have been something I was inspired by that day it could have been something I remembered from when I was a little kid could have been something I dreamed last night and just don't remember that I dreamed it. Who knows? Okay, so I'm just going back in with some of this Sausalito. I'm sorry, not the Sausalito, some of this um, Santa Maria. Because there's not quite enough of it on here. I got a lot of other orangey colors. I need to put a little bit more of the blue in here. unload a little more here. And let's go back and get some white heat. I just want to pounce in some of this white heat just so I don't end up blending it out quite so much. I want to actually be a part of the finish because it's so sheer. So I just use it to sort of soften some of these harder edges in the colors. Mm -hmm. All right, let's, uh, let's see how we did here. Let me just check and see if I missed anything. Yeah, I missed a few bubbles up here. There we go. Let's pull this up. Let's hope this came out as nicely as the other ones. Now, if you're on a vertical surface, not a horizontal one like I'm on right now, which is a flat surface. If you're on a vertical surface, like a wall or the side of a desk, you pull your stencil from the top down. Why is that? Because if you pull it and it let you slips and flops back, it'll shift. If you're pulling it down, gravity is more likely than not just gonna simply continue to pull it off or leave it half pulled. So that helps keep bleeding down. It helps control your patterning. Oh my gosh, look how cute this is. Look at our gorgeous multicolored elephant. Oh, I love that. I got a few little bleeds and spots, but since I don't know where I'm going with this, that's not a problem. All right, I'm gonna set that down there. We have one last one to work on. Check my, check my timing here. All right, so you can see I have two colors on here. This is our sun and I have foiled these before, but I've never flat out painted something else. So clearly I need to sand this a little bit again like I did the other ones. Going with the grain, getting any of the popped grain down. Okay, that's 
done, let me take my paper, wipe the surface. All right. And I think I was thinking of using a stencil, but I don't use that often. This is a textile pattern and I don't use it that much and it's really cool. So I thought maybe this time I'd pay attention and use some of this. So as you can see, some of this is gonna be in the center of the sun and some of it's gonna be out. So I'm actually going to adjust my colors to work with that. So, uh, sorry, I'm having a problem getting my chair settled in. I move things and I just lose my ability to focus. All right, there's my paper towel. Let's fold that over in a different way. And before I do that though, I'm gonna unload all this paint from this brush. And as you see, I am not washing the brush. I'm simply taking off all the extra colors from the other things that I was doing. All right, let me fold this in half again. And again, I have sprayed these with spray adhesive, a very, very light, quick spray, and then I set the stencils aside and let them dry for five to 10 minutes because that will keep me from having stencil adhesive products uh, sticking to uh, the surface instead of staying on the stencil. All right, I'm trying to think of what colors I want to do here. So, hmm. I think we're gonna do some Sausalito, and I'm gonna have to be careful because I wanna pay attention to my edges so I don't go over the circle where I don't want to. So let's start with some Sausalito. Now this stencil, I mean this, this cutout of the sun actually comes with a pair of sunglasses. Uh, my son who helped me reorganize my studio actually put them away for me and he put them up so high I can't reach them. So I, I have to wait for him to come and do a help day with me next week so that somebody can get them down off the shelves. <laughs> Not surprising though. It's kind of how life works. When you have a six foot four child and you yourself are only five six, yeah, you are gonna end up with some very, help, I can't get it down off the shelf moments. Okay, I need a little more white heat since that seems to be the one I'm using a lot of, because I'm almost using it like a blending medium. Simply because of the translucency, but it allows me to add in color without having it get too overwhelming. I'm taking a little bit of the navy and I'm rubbing it through all the other colors that are on here, because it'll soften it. just give me a nice soft triple tone blue to work with. We do have some new foils coming in next week that I'm very excited about. Uh, we have um, an ice blue foil coming in. I have teals and navy and all that other good stuff but I don't have like an icy blue so I'm bringing that in. heat in here. Okay, be careful around the edge of the circle so I, tr I really don't want to bleed my colors over, but if I have, I will figure out a way to fix it because that's what I do. 
I'm always figuring that kind of stuff out. All right, let's pull this down. Oh, I don't want to pull it down. I want to pick my other colors. Duh. Sometimes I'm just not very bright. All right, we're going to use a different... Uh, no, we're good. I'm not going to use a different one. I'm going to do this whole thing with one brush, and one brush only to show you that I can do four different, three different pieces with five or six different colors and never wash out a brush because it is actually possible. So what I'm doing is, again, I'm offloading all the extra paint on my brush. <laughs> yeah, I know that wasn't Sausalito. Uh, yes, Tony, I got my furniture last week. Um, unfortunately, it took threats of police and lawyers that weren't actually threats because I'd already contacted the attorneys um, just to get them to deliver our stuff. I, I, you know, it seems to be a thing these days that people are starting out really, really strong on the front end of jobs and really falling short on the back end. All right, so I've put my a little Eldorado gold on my brush. And again, this color is going to show very, very close to uh, the other color gold that it's on. I'm using it more as a blending medium and it will, it will dry a different color. It will dry just slightly different. So I get all of these little spots that are outside the silver circle with the gold. And then we're gonna put some other colors in there. Come on, lay down. Not sure if you can see the whole thing or if I've pushed this so far off the screen, I'm stenciling out of your eye line. Here we go. Uh, Tony, yeah, it was ridiculous. Um, we had seven moving dates. One, as a mistake, I will give to my husband because he misread some paperwork, but uh, the rest were all on them and they were about to blow us off again until we finally had to say, okay, you know, I'm sorry we didn't want it to be this way. We tried really hard to work with you, but you're not working with us. And that suddenly woke up a bunch of people and all of a sudden we had our stuff the next day. And I hate, you know, I hate having to be that way. I don't like, you know, to tell somebody you're screwing up and we're going to have you arrested for theft because that actually was the option. Um, we just want to pay you your money and, and get our stuff. We have, we have no interest in playing other games. All right, so I'm gonna put a little white heat in here. We're gonna change the tone on this. And then I'm gonna just put a little touch of copper in here too. So on these, I'm not so much blending randomly. I'm putting a couple layers of color on top of each other. Yep, and I bumped into something, so I got some purple on my brush. Goodness, I, thank goodness I checked. Got to clean that color off. It doesn't want to be on there. It's not what I'm using right now. Question, my thinking process is here. Do I take any of the deeper colors and blend them up this way, or do I go with the Sausalito over all the other ones and make it look a little more sunsetty? And I think that's what I'm gonna do. I really think that's it. purple on my brush and I must have knocked it on that plate somewhere and yep there it is I see it right on the plate where I was dipping in that's not terribly helpful all right let's get a little here Just 
tapping in a little of the Sausalito. And I just want to get a little bit in every spot just because this gold is so close to the base color, it could easily disappear if I don't pay attention. Oh, this is gonna be pretty. Now, again, this has to be allowed to dry. So look how pretty that center is. And then we're gonna let, and then this same pattern's gonna fill the outer side, and it's still gonna be just as gorgeous, just slightly different colors to give the impression of sun. Now, that's all I can do for today, very specifically, because metal glow needs longer to dry than set coat does. Let's flip this up. Oh, the colors are so pretty when they're soft like this. Sorry, I can't get my camera to flip up a little bit. There we go. So the colors are super, super pretty when they're like this. They're very soft, especially when you blend them in with a little white in there. The white was not so much to be a color on its own, but more of a translucent lightning color to soften those colors a little bit so i'm just trying to share with everybody that when you stencil think a little outside the box don't think one solid color think multiple colors think soft blends and you can think more experimentally so that's my recommendation on this. And of course, I'm always, always, always happy. Uh, excuse me, I have the hiccups. I'm always happy to help guide in color selections or if you're struggling with a project, you wanna take this one on. Isn't that elephant wonderful? We do carry it, it's on our website. And we, ha we have the elephant head and then we have a full elephant body. So we have two elephant options, which I consider fairly unusual for a small stencil collection like mine. Um, but I love it. So we're gonna keep those, that idea going. We're gonna get back to this probably tomorrow. I'll do a little more on all of this. Maybe we'll work on finishing it up and y'all can keep me company while I do those. These are my summer things. Now, two things. Like I said, Metal Glow is not exterior rated. So that means the paint may break down or the colors will change in the sunlight. If you wanna keep this outside, I suggest going with set coat because all set coat colors are exterior rated or you can get a UV rated top coat on there. Uh, you can, or we special order full effects top coats with the UV additive. Um, they do not just make it up. It's only made for special orders. So if you need UV top coat and you want it for me, just let me know and it will take about seven days to get to you because they make them up specially. Um, or go with, go with set coat. So those are your options, just putting them out there to let you know what the difference at the products is. And uh, my shirt just will not, my, my jacket will not stay up on my shoulder. <laughs> anyway, have a great weekend. I will be back tomorrow. I know I might not see a lot of you because it's 4th of July weekend and you could be doing all kinds of fun stuff. Um, but I will see you soon. Talk to you later, everyone. Have a great day.